In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, good people of God, and welcome to today's edition of Catholic Meditation. I am Reverend Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Today is Thursday, the 9th of September 2021. The Church celebrates the feast day of St. Peter Clever, priest. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. O God, who made St. Peter Clever a slave of slaves and strengthened him with wonderful charity and patience as he came to their help, grant through his intercession that seeking the things of Jesus Christ we may love our neighbor in deeds and in truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians, chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 150. The response to the psalm is, Let everything that breathes Praise the Lord. The Gospel is taken from St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 27 to 38. I read from the first reading. Brethren, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, lowliness, meekness, and patience forbearing each other, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And over all this, put on love, which binds everything together in a perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The theme for today's meditation is Let love be the dress you wear. Let love be the dress you wear. Dear friends in Christ, both readings of today exhort us to love. In the first reading, St. Paul says we should put on love as a dress. Let love be the dress you wear. This means we should be all covered by love. 
a dress covers the body. When you dress, people see what you wear, and a dress you wear tells much about who you are. If love is the dress you wear, then it will be seen in your life. You will be compassionate. You will be kind. You will be lowly. You will be meek, patient, forbearing. You will be forgiving, peaceful, and thankful. These are qualities of one who loves. You cannot claim to love or to be a loving person yet not to have the above qualities. Well, beloved, it is very true that for those we care about, it is easy to do all these and to be all these. A husband who loves his wife and a wife who loves her husband will find it very easy to let go, even if painful, and to be generous and kind to the other. When we love our friends, we can always be patient and compassionate. Love is easy to come by when we deal with our friends and those for whom we have a soft spot. You may even be blind to their weaknesses. You may be patient with them, but the truth is, this is always so with those we have a certain chemistry. But were these very things to be done by another for whom you have no clique, even if done just once, we may find it hard even to forgive and let go, just that once, that they hurt us. It is also true that even if done by our friends, sometimes friendship could be broken and we could truly find it difficult to forgive. It is for this reason that in the gospel, Jesus qualifies the love we must have. We are expected to love even our enemies. It is also true that a one-time friend could become an enemy perhaps because of what they did to you. It is easy to love friends. It is easy to do good things to acquaintances and to associates, to love those who love us, to love those with whom we naturally bond. But I tell you, the true test of love presents itself when the one standing in front of you who needs your love is an enemy or one you naturally do not like. Then you test yourself and can really evaluate yourself if you truly love. So Jesus tells us, let us not boast to love or console ourselves to have love if that love excludes enemies. So he says in the gospel, love even your enemies. So ask yourself again in sincerity, do you love? Do you truly love? If your love is limited only to your friends, then dear friends, in truth, we should say that you do not love. Because loving friends, our love is returned. But we should love our enemies. Love those who do not love you. Jesus says, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who insult you. It is much easier to want to give it back, or if we don't give it back, our prayer is rather that terrible things happen to them so that they too get a taste of what we went through. But no, no. Jesus says we should love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. How dare you bless someone who curses you? How dare you bless someone who, if given the opportunity, will kill you? But this is the challenge of Christianity. This is what Jesus asks of us to do, so that our love becomes genuine and complete. For if we love only those who love us, what difference do we make? Even the pagans, those who do not believe, do as much. They love only those who love them. So to truly see how much we love, Jesus says we should love even our enemies, then we make the difference. Remember the parable of the Good Samaritan. Samaritans and Jews were never friends, they were enemies. But this Samaritan was called good because he stopped by to assist an enemy. This is what we are called to do, beloved. If you love only those who love you, you are no different from the pagans. God loves both those who love him and those who don't love him. He makes his rain fall on the good as well as on the bad. And his sun shines on the good as well as on the bad. So dear friends, to prove how much you truly love it is not in loving those who love you. It is in loving even your enemies. It is not easy, right? But it is possible. 
to prove exactly how much we love. Love is lived. It is not preached. Jesus loved us even when we had sinned against him and he was ready to die on the cross for us even while we were still sinners. And this is the challenge, beloved. Like I said, it is much easier to love those who love us. But the true test of how much love you have is in loving even those who wish you evil. It is to love even those who, despite the good that you do, they never appreciate. It is difficult, but it is possible. Jesus loved till the very end. Even those who persecuted him, even while hanging on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they do. And this is what he expects of us, his children. Let us love, beloved. Love your friends. Love those who love you. But love even those who do not love you. Love even those who wish death for you. Pray for those who wish you evil. Pray for them and bless them. Then you make the whole difference. Let us pray for that grace. That God will enable us to be able to forgive all those who have hurt us. To be able to reconcile and to let go and to love them and to pray for them. In that way, beloved, we show the genuineness and the truth of the love that we possess. St. Peter Clever was born in Spain in the year 1580. He felt the missionary call, joined the Society of Jesus, and later went to Colombia in Latin America, where he left seven the African slaves. He would meet the slaves when they arrived at Cartagena and care for the dying, the sick, and the children. He instructed and baptized the slaves, ministering to them with love. He was named the slave of the slaves on account of his special care for them. He died in the year 1654. In the year 1896, Pope Leo XIII declared him the special heavenly patron of missions to the black peoples. Yes, Peter Cleaver gave his all, even his life, out of love in serving the slaves. Dear friend, you too can love even those you do not know. You can love even those who hate you. For at the end of our earthly sojourn, we shall be judged on how much love we exhibited, even love for our enemies. Dear God, for that grace to love even those who hate us, we beg of you. Amen. St. Peter Cleaver, intercede for us. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen.